I have one of the most respected high school diplomas in California. <laughs> and I was leading a student ministry at the University of California, Berkeley, when I got a letter from a sociology professor who had several degrees, had written four best-selling books, and decided that because so many students had been saved, that he should debate me on the reality of Christianity. At Wheeler Hall, which was the prime piece of property for the School of Journalism. Yeah. I wrapped up that paper as fast as I could. I said, I'm never gonna do it, and I threw it in the air, and while the ball of paper was in the air, the Holy Spirit said, you're going. There I was, he got up. I'm gonna tell you, I never saw anything like it in my 700 students waiting like at an execution. He went first, that's gonna figure into this sermon later. He went first and surgically destroyed everything I believed. Destroyed everything I believed. Help me somebody, he took a scalpel and named every pope, every corrupt evangelist, every corrupt doctrine. He showed this and that and the other. He was immaculate. And then he said that I was a fool. All right, you know what you don't know about the inner city and those that live there do? It is not when the guy you're about to fight says, yo mama, that starts the fight. <laughs> it's the guy standing back that goes, ooh. <laughs> I didn't prepare anything. I didn't know what I was gonna say. And he said that and the Holy Ghost behind me went, Ooh! That's what I want in this conference. The devil said your church isn't gonna grow. Your election isn't gonna win. Your money isn't gonna come in. You're not gonna get what you want. All that's been said this week is not gonna change America. And the Holy Ghost is standing behind us saying, ooh, and let's start the fight. How many of you like to know what happened at the debate? Yeah. No, you know, it's getting late. You've heard enough preaching to... Uh, the Lord said, ask them a question. And so I asked the audience a question. How many of you in this school of journalism, because you're writers, would like to write a bestseller? All the hands went up. I said, Lord, that's not enough. I need another, what, where are we going with this? <laughs> I'm, di I'm dying right here. I said, now I ask them how many of them believe that they will write a bestseller? How many of you believe you will write a bestseller? Out of 700, maybe 50, 60 hands. And then I stopped and I brought up what I'm gonna bring up to you, L. Ron Hubbard. The man who started Scientology on a bet in a bar in London that he could start a religion, and he did. They got so famous and so rich that they decided to build a cavern in the ground, many hundreds of feet in the ground, 
in order to build vaults out of stainless steel and then take plastic uh, bomb-proof containers, then laser the writings of L. Ron Hubbard on these titanium plates, put them in the jar made out of space-age plastic, seal them, put them in the vault several hundred feet in the ground. And I told them that because that's how long ago this was, that they did this. I said, why did they do that? Why did they do, why did they spend millions of dollars to do that? And then I said, before I answer that, how many of you in this room believe that you are going to write a bestseller that will continue to sell long after you're dead? I didn't even let them stop. Long after every generation is dead, long after everything is over, those writings are still alive. Scientology doesn't believe that. They don't believe that L. Ron Hubbard's words are rust-proof, bomb-proof, culturally proof. They had to dig a hole. Jesus never wrote anything down. I said, now I want to look at you for a moment because my brother in his Brioni suit with all his degrees, none of what he said is relevant. None of it is relevant. Why did Jesus say heaven and earth will pass away but my word will not pass away. Now I'm not, now hold it. I ain't gonna get a cheap one out of you today. I looked at him and I said, the fact that Christ could predict that his words would be the perennial bestseller as long as there was a human race destroys every argument of this man. And then I began to shout a little bit. How many ever felt like shouting? And I'm going to try it now and see what happens. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try it again. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. The most vocal critic of the Bible in the Enlightenment period was Voltaire. He was so angry at the Bible that he said the most vicious, obscene, and abusive things anyone has ever said about the Bible and about Jesus and about, he's even worse than Stephen Colbert. <laughs> and then he said near his death, 50 years after I die, there won't be a Bible in Europe. What he didn't know is that he had friends that lived in Romania. He stayed at their house many times. And they were a family that were very wealthy and they covered for him. But what they didn't bargain for is that after he died, they died and the son took over and was radically saved. <laughs> took the house that Voltaire lived in turned it into a Bible distribution center. I'm gonna try it again. See if I can get some Pentecostal read. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will now shout unto God with the voice of triumph. 